Good morning. We are once again returning back to the Old Testament, this time to the book of Isaiah. It is a long book with 66 chapters in total. Many scholars call this a mini Bible. Why? Because 39 chapters, the first 39 chapters, representing appeared to be representing the Old Testament. And the next 27 chapters, the New Testament. I'm going to share more of this later when I give the context of today's passage. But in the meantime, let's come before the Lord. Father, open our eyes so that we can understand the mystery of your salvation. We ask for the deep conviction that salvation is from our Lord Jesus Christ alone. Speak and we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, the book of Isaiah can be divided into two parts broadly, and the first 39 chapters and the next 27 chapters. But many scholars actually have divided it into three parts instead. Chapter 1 to 39, still the first part. But in terms of the second part, it's being divided into 40 to 55 and then 56 to 66. We have covered the first 39 chapters not too long ago. And now we are going to use the next six weeks to cover the second division and the third division. The first division is addressed to the people of Judah in the days of Uzziah. In the day of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. In fact, if you recall, probably, right, that's uh, between 36 to 39, it talked about Hezekiah being come before the Lord and he prayed because of the seizure from Assyrian. And then the Lord acts and the people of Assyrians return. Sennacherib was being defeated on his own. And then now we come to chapter 40. The second division is addressing to the people who would be in exile in Babylon 150 years later. So, is it still the same Isaiah, although some scholars say that it's probably written by another person, but I'm not going to trouble you with that. I will consider that is the inspired author will still be the same, the Holy Spirit. But between chapter 39 to chapter 40, there will be a 150 years gap. And Isaiah is not only writing about what is going to happen 150 years later, Isaiah is writing, addressing to the people who were in exile in Babylon. So it actually skipped from Hezekiah down to Manasseh and then all the way to Zedekiah and then they were in exile. So that is the reason why in chapter 40, you see the word comfort, comfort my people. Why? Because the people were already in exile in Babylon. They were seeing no hope. And Isaiah wrote to them 150 years ahead of the time. So this is the prophecy that written in the book of Isaiah addressing to the people 150 years later that when they were so-called Losing their hope, and Isaiah say, Comfort, comfort, the Lord is going to deliver you. So the first verse, Behold my servant, this is in the ESV. The same Bible in the daily Bible as we have used. So the question will be, Who is the Lord's servant? Who is the Lord's servant? Because, behold, look, my servant does speak. The Lord. So, the book of Isaiah in general, and who is the servant in this particular passage, chapter 42, verse 1 to 9. Yahweh, the Lord, described about 15 or 16 characters as my servant throughout the Old Testament. In Exodus, Moses is known as the servant of the Lord. And then, later on, the other leaders, right, in the Old Testament, from Joshua, from Caleb, 
and even David was being known as the servant of the Lord. So in the early part of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 20, verse 3, Yahweh refers to the person Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, as his servant. But later on, you will see that just even in the chapter 40, when you move over to the second division itself, the chapter 41, you can see very clearly, right, chapter 41, verse 8 to 9. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. So even in chapter 41, the servant of the Lord referred to the people of Israel, the people of Judah, the people of Jacob, whom he has chosen, the offspring of Abraham. You whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from his furthest corners are saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you off. So remember, right up to even chapter 41, that the servant of the Lord refers to the people group, Israel, Jacob. But then in Isaiah chapter 42, just about 10 verses later, after today's passage, in 18, Hear you deaf, and look you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? So you notice that the my servant in chapter 42 verse 1 to 9 is very different from verse 18 onwards. In fact, you can see that there appears to be at least two servants. Two servants of the Lord is being spoken in the book of Isaiah. So who is the servant in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 1 to 9? And that is the main theme that I wanted to share with you and I want you to truly understand this special servant of the Lord being mentioned in today's passage. But in the New American Standard Bible, the editors and the translators have already so-called give us the hint. The editors of the New American Standard Bible actually highlighted the word my because it's spoken by the Lord Yahweh himself. But the servant, the editors also highlighted the word S, capital S, as servant. So you know that the pronoun my refers to Yahweh and the capital I as servant refers to a very special person of the Lord, the incarnated Jesus Christ himself. So the main idea for the nine verses of Isaiah 42 is that Christ, the faithful servant of the Lord, will bring justice and light to all the people of the earth. So you notice that I've highlighted the first word, faithful. And then the next word is justice, which is the main theme of today. And then the light and to all the people of the earth. I'd like to expound and expand for you the main idea in today's sermon. So I'm going to cover three key points for today. The servant of the Lord Yahweh is one who is filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the one that brings justice to the world and later on you will see that he is more than just bringing justice to the world and he is a covenant and a light to first the people of Israel and then to all the people of all nations. Three key points. So, for today, just need to remember two key questions. Who is the Lord and what is the servant is doing? First, the servant of the Lord is one that is filled with the Spirit, but he is a delight to the Lord. He is a delight to the Lord. In chapter 42, verse 1, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. Even though the short paragraph is written in a poetic form, in fact, the first nine verses is really sometimes it's called the servant song or the song of the servant. Although there will be many songs of the servant as you continue to read the, the book of Isaiah, but this particular one, 
most scholars have agreed that this is truly the servant song. We can clearly tell that it is the spoken word of Yahweh because he said, Behold, my servant. And he uphold, he hold it, and he support it, and it is in the present tense, it is continuously, right, that the Lord Yahweh is upholding his servant, my chosen and elect, my soul delights. And in the Matthew, in the New Testament, as they further explain what is written in the Old Testament, you can see that in Matthew chapter, tw chapter 3, verse 17. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. At the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist, this is the voice, spoken word of Yahweh himself. The servant, the Messiah, is the beloved Son of Father God, with whom Father God is well pleased. Besides that, he is a delight to the Lord. He is humble and gentle. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. His birth in a manger in Bethlehem is humble and ordinary. His vocation as a carpenter is also ordinary in that sense. He is meek and gentle. And as I say, that the word meek and gentle is not that he is weak per se, but he is actually a strength beneath or a strength within. So it is like, really, that it is like a reed, a bruised reed, that he will not even break it. Right? As you know, the reed, the so-called reed itself is basically soft, Right at the um, next to the uh, river itself, usually that it is not as useful, right? But at the same time, that even with such a bruised reed, that he will not want to break it. So anyone that comes before him, that he will speak gently. Of course, of those that is defiled the word of God and make his temple, right, uh, a, a trading place. He actually that even take up the whip and chase them out because that is the house of his father God. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. As you can see with the small little fire that I put down there that probably not you don't even need to blow it as you walk past it the wind that is brought by your movement could have extinguished it, could have quenched it but he will not quench it. He is a delight to the Lord. He is humble, but he is faithful. As in verse 3, he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged. How faithful is he? He will not grow faint or be discouraged. His disciples did not understand him. His people, Israel, whom he come to deliver, whom he come to save, wanted him to be crucified till he has established justice in the earth. His coming, he is bringing justice not just to his people, but to the people all the way in the earth, end of the earth, and to the coastline waiting for his law. In the Hebrew language, the coastlines right, is referring to the land that is beyond the Mediterranean Sea. It is to the utmost part of the earth. He comes. His ministry is only in the land of Palestinian. But he is going to bring justice to all the people in the earth. So we describe that this is the servant of the Lord. This is the special servant. He is a delight to the Lord. He is being filled with the Holy Spirit and he is going to bring the justice. But let me just further continue to expound on what is his mission. So the first question is, who is he? The second question is, what is his mission? Justice to the world. He is going to bring forth justice 
three times all together in just four verses chapter 42 verse 1 to 4 three times they mention that he bring forth justice he established justice but more than that he is justice not only he is going to judge but he himself first offer himself to be judged to be judged so that when he satisfied the righteous requirement of the Lord that the people who believe in him will receive the justice the justification from Father God himself he brings justice he is justice in the law of Yahweh whosoever sin must die and pay for the sin but while we were yet sinner he the servant of the Lord die on our behalf in Mark chapter 10 verse 45 for even the son of man the servant of the Lord came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many so as the word servant means that he serve and he do the will of his father God the servant of the Lord dies so that we will live The third point, he is a covenant and light. I am the Lord, say Yahweh. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nation. Covenant, barit in Hebrew, is a contractual agreement between God and a person or a people group. It requires binding action from one or both parties. In the Old Testament, God first established the covenant even with Noah and with Moses and so on. But the most prominent one that is God established a covenant with Abraham. In from Genesis chapter 12, chapter 15 and chapter 17, God promises Abraham that he will be a great nation that he will be a blessing to the families of the earth he is going to have offsprings like the stars in heavens and that cannot be counted and chapter 17 genesis abraham will be the father of a multitude of nations the servant that is being mentioned in isaiah 42 is going to be the covenant the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel but not just to Israel he is going to be a light for the nation for the Gentiles for you and for me who are non-Jews so he is a covenant for the people which usually singular representing the people group Israel but he is also a light for the nations which is in plural representing all the nations of the earth but how is he going to be a light for the nation? To open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. Spiritually unredeemed Israel and Gentile are blind and they are captives in darkness. Though, Right in Isaiah chapter 41, which we have read before today's passage itself, that Cyrus was the one that had been ordained, chosen by the Lord to deliver the people who are in exile. Remember chapter 40 onwards, Isaiah is speaking to the people that who would be in exile 150 years later. Although Isaiah himself died during the reign of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, but he has already written this prophecy this prophecy to the people that they will be in exile but the Lord is not going to leave them there the Lord is going to send them back and the Lord is first going through appoint the person Cyrus to release them that they will be able to return to their homeland but now this servant of the Lord is going to release not just physically but more importantly 
spiritually that they will be released from their spiritual bondage in john chapter 8 verse 12 again jesus spoke to them saying i am the light of the world whoever follow me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life in isaiah 42 right for the first seven verses referring to my servant the lord's servant but in verses 8 and 9 for those who actually have followed me so far you would have noticed that i have skipped a few verses itself verse 8 i am the lord this is my name my glory i give to no other nor my praise to calf idols behold the former things have come to pass and new things i now declare before they spring forth i tell you of them remember isaiah was writing to the people 150 years later who will be in exile and none other than the word that he received is from yahweh himself that god say i am the only one that able to see from the beginning to the end i know what is going to happen i am not going to give the glory to any idols to any so-called fourth teller or fortune teller it is god the lord yahweh himself right why i'm not going to spend a lot of time for today's sermon focusing on the person that is speaking the lord yahweh himself i'm going to cover that in more detail in the next week's sermon right that as we continue on isaiah chapter 45 next week but for today just remember yahweh himself is the creator of heaven and earth he spread out the heaven he lay off the the so-called the sea itself so as i begin for today's sermon asking you to remember who is my servant who is the lord's servant in the book of isaiah but who is the lord's servant in this very special passage itself just nine verses in fact just the seven verses the first seven verses of chapter 42 it is none other than our lord jesus christ so isaiah already prophesizing that while the people in babylon they will be delivered physically by cyrus who is also the servant of the lord but all the people eventually will be delivered spiritually by this special servant of the lord so let's recap the lessons that we have learned so far who is the servant of the lord and what is his mission he is filled with the spirit he is bringing the justice to the world and he is justice himself he offered himself to die on the cross so that all of us can receive this justification from father god from yahweh himself and he is a covenant to the promise that to the people of israel and he is the light to the nations to all the nations so just recap the main idea again christ the faithful servant why is he known as a faithful servant because he received the holy spirit and he is the one that will not grow faint he will continue to persevere and he will bring justice all the way to the end of the earth and he is the light to not just to the people of israel but to all the people of the earth so i have left behind these three questions which i encourage the teaching leader to discuss with you first question how can i be a spirit-filled servant of the lord yes you notice that this servant i did not capitalize it right while there is only one and only one capitalized servant of the lord who does the will of father god we too are called to be the servant of the lord that serve him but first how can we be spirit-filled servant how can we be a faithful servant uphold chosen by the lord and delights in the lord so the important means of being faithfulness is really to be spirit-filled but how can we be spirit-filled your teacher going to talk 
and discuss with you. Second question, what the capitalized servant do the will of the Father? We, the servant of the Lord, how can we serve Him, imitate Him to be humble and serve faithfully? And serve faithfully. How can we also do the will of Father God? How can we too fulfill our respective calling? Our Lord, servant, the servant of the Lord has set an example for us. How do we continue his posture of humility and his perseverance and his faithfulness and to serve the kingdom of God? How can we bring justice, the good news of salvation of the Lord, to those who are spiritually blinded, to those who are spiritually bound by the evil one? How can we do that? What must we do? Shall, shall we come right to reflect on this reflection song and discuss it? And now we invite our Deacon Hannah to lead us into the reflection song.